Good day everybody. Welcome to our final leg on the South American tour. <clears throat> we started up in the uh, Northwest in uh, Colombia, flew down the West Coast, cut across about uh, almost all the way down at the bottom, came up and around. <clears throat> uh oh, looks like Wayne's caught the ire of uh, Nightbot again. Uh, yeah, and now we're coming up into Brazil and we're wrapping up. This is the final leg on this, this trip. I think it's 11 legs we've done, 10 or 11 legs. <laughs> Still recovering, uh, Wayne? Uh, we'll get you back in the air soon, I hope. So it's a short flight today. It's only about an hour and a half flight time. Uh, we're heading from Brasilia to the coast in Salvador. And as per normal, we are flying the Star Wars Latam livery. And just as we had in the beginning, we are joined by Nick. You can see him off in the distance there in his uh, livery Latam A320 as well. First of all, though, just a big hello to Similar, Dark Fury, Number 10 Ox, and Wayne's here, and of course, Nick who's uh, managed to be able to join us today. <clears throat> New series coming next Sunday. More information to follow on that uh, during the week. But uh, it's going to be some long legs and some interesting places we're going to fly into. So uh, let's jump on board, get things going, and we'll get the airplane up and ready to go. <clears throat> All right, we're on board. We'll do our checks. Parking brake is set. Flaps are up. Spoilers retract and disarmed. Weather radar is off. Predictive wind shear is off. Engine masters one and two are off. Igniters in normal. Thrust levers are at idle. Gear lever is down. So we're all good there. Danny, hello. Welcome to the stream. Glad you could make it. Sorry, I had a little bit of a cough there. All right, let's get uh, this going. Get that out of the way. Don't want to forget that. So up we go. Batteries coming on. External power is on. Brake pressure is good. Cockpit lighting and panel lighting. Turn that all up to where we like it. Oops. So update to the DC-6, they've uh, made some significant improvements based on feedback and everything. I know the last flight I did before the update, my gyro pilot wasn't working properly. Uh, so I'm hoping they get that uh, sorted and working a little bit better. But still managed to get the flight I was doing in, so that was all good. Alright, DPU fire test. There we go. Crew oxygen on and the gears aligning. Sturdy lighting nav and logo lights are on. Seatbelt signs are on. Portable devices are on and emergency exits are armed. Full flight today, 174 passengers. And they're making the leap from the jetway into the airplane as we speak. Probe and window heats on automatic. APU is off. Fuel pumps confirmed off. Engine fire tests one and two. Our good flight directors are on. Barrow is currently 1025 and as you can see the uh, weather is looking very nice so we'll dial that in and we'll get that in on the standby as well there we go <clears throat> EFIS arc 10 on my side arc 40 on the FO side Constraints are off. FC will set up in a minute. And radios. 
8 on the radios and as it stands at the moment we have no ATC currently up in either uh, departure arrival or en route so we'll just deal with what we have as we go Not sure why I got a little bit of a cough this morning All right, so time to start getting the MCU data entered in. So over to the fly pad. Company information, we'll put that in. Let's get the Simbri flight plan in. There we go. And we'll pop this out. Head into dispatch fuel and our fuel for today 6,900 kilograms 6,900 and real-time loading is fine and we'll get that off and going all right so we'll head into the MCDU we'll get our flight plan in from Brasilia over to Salvador TAM 5556 constant index of 25. We're going up to 39,000 feet today. And the tropo is not bad. We're slightly off. So I'll put the corrective number in. There we go. We'll head over to our initialization. Uh, page B. Zero fuel weight today. 59.2. And our center of gravity is 30.0. Block fuel is 6.9 tons. And our wind for today's flight, slight tailwind of 18 knots. There we go. So, given the wind. And everything we are going to be departing off runway 11 right. And we will be taking the FSA to Bravo departure. FSA to Bravo departure. And we are going via uh, Confirm, look at the departure. Uh, not sure how far out it's got us going. It doesn't actually have us going to either, but we'll put in Colda as our initial. There we go. And our Hi, arrival. Crew, I'd like to welcome you aboard our flight. As you find your seat, be sure to place your larger carry-on items in the overhead bins and smaller items underneath the seat in front of you. If you have trouble finding a location. Given the current winds, I'm just taking a look and see if they've updated. We're going to be landing on runway 10. And we're going to do the ILS Yankee for runway 10. Once all your items are and we're going to be coming in on the. Tally one alpha. There it is. And uh, yeah, via Dabra is fine. That's now entered in. So we can go take a look. See how that looks. So we're going to take off. Head up towards FSA. We're not going to go all the way out to Colda. We'll probably uh, do a direct two and take on the next waypoint. Kind of doesn't like it when you try to do the uh, deleting things or no points. So we go out. It's kind of eastward flight, as you can see. And we're going to come down, and then we're going to make a left turn and do an arc around to pick up the ILS in for the runway.
So that is all good. Style uh, you back down and you back over to Arc. So the MCU data is in, the MCU DU is set up. Rad Nav for departure. We will put in the VOR. So that is the Foxtrot Sierra Alpha VOR. And we want the one that's 38 miles away. And that's where we're going to uh, make the turn and carry on the rest of our route. So that's now entered in. IFR clearance will take it as given as we have nobody here currently to provide clearance. So we will be self cleared. Oh, did you? Oh, yeah, that's an idea. Uh, let me. Uh, Oh, you're watching us on Volanta? Okay. You get timed out because you were uh, in caps? Doesn't like caps. Let's see if we can... Uh, is called, called a cell? Yeah, that'll work. Okay, we'll do it that way. All right. So IFR clearance, as I said, we'll take that as given. IRS is our aligned, so we're good there. Flight plan, we've kind of discussed and gone over. EFIS nav aids, uh, not going to need them, but I will turn the VOR on. Takeoff briefing, standard takeoff briefing. And squat code is set to 7,000. We are good there. So baggage and catering is on board we're waiting on the passengers so what I am going to do is start the APU get that up and running Just watching to make sure OBS doesn't decide to quit on me it's done that a couple times over the last few weeks so just keeping an eye on it APU is up and APU is started so the MCD waits and take off information so we'll head into our performance page. The threshold. We are ready to go when you are. Our transition altitude is 7,000 feet. Uh, we're slightly high. I mean, we're in a bit of an elevator. We got 10 and a half thousand feet on the uh, runways, so that's not bad. We're going to be a flaps uh, one and 0.3 down bubble and we're going to be flexing at 60 degrees which will give us a v1 of 124 a v2 of 125 and a v or v r of 125 and a v2 of 129 that is all set apu is ready so apu bleeds are coming on Fans are up and running. External power is now disconnected. And we are running on aircraft only. So we have the load sheets, everything assigned. We'll get ready for push. So let's get the ground crew to bring around the tug. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We will be ready shortly. Roger. Cockpit door is now closed and locked. Cabin door is closed and locked. It should be arming the slides. Fuel pumps. Good morning, ladies and we'll gentlemen, and welcome aboard flight 5556. Our flight time will be roughly one hour. Beacon light is on. Steering Please pin has been inserted. We ask that you make sure that all devices are in airplane mode and your larger devices Transponder are in airplane mode. If you have not already, please fasten your seatbelt and verify it is low and tight across your lap. Stand by. So we're going to push back, and it's not going to be a far push. Uh, we're basically going to push back around, and we're going to go tail to uh, the left as we're looking, so that I'll be facing uh, the same way Nick is facing at the moment. And when we taxi out, we're going to go down this way, around the terminal, 
and yeah, the runway's down over there. There's another aircraft over there, pretty cool. All right, so I think we are ready to go. Uh, we're gonna dial in, uh, let me just do a double check on restrictions, if there is any. Don't think there was. Uh, no, we'll be fine. I'm not foreseeing any issues with restrictions. So we'll just dial straight into our cruise altitude of 390. Set, and we are managed on the other two as well. Brasilia area traffic, TAM 5556 pushing back, facing uh, south. Cockpit to ground. Go ahead, flight deck. We are ready for pushback and engine start. Roger, release the parking brakes, please. Parking brakes released, pushing back. And the nice thing with getting the uh, tug in in advance is you can get a pushback right away, which is a very handy. Especially on VATSIM when they give you the push and clear and other people are kind of waiting. You're behind and you can start your engines at your discretion. All right, AP bleeds on, engine master to start. Ladies and gentlemen, please direct your attention to the screen for an engine one. demonstration. Thank you for flying with us. Starting. Estimados pasajeros, es un placer tenerlos a bordo de la NAM. Por su seguridad y confort, solicitamos poner atención a las instrucciones de seguridad de este avión. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a pleasure to have you on board la NAM. For your safety and comfort, please pay attention to the safety instructions for this aircraft. Por favor, acompáñenos. Please join us. Guarda el equipaje de mano en el compartimiento superior o bajo el asiento de adelante. Overshoot this one a little bit. Overhead compartment or underneath the seat in front of you. Pasillos, salidas de emergencia y primera fila deben estar libres de equipaje. Aisles, emergency exits, and the first row must be kept clear of luggage. Ajuste su cinturón de seguridad para we'll que la señal se ilumine. Fast pushback complete. Whenever set parking brake set. Parking brake is set. Parking brake set. Roger. Okay, the tow bar is para disconnected and the equipment is clear. We will see you on the right side with the beam. Thanks, and you can disconnect and go to hand signals. Thanks. Have a good flight. See you later. And we're definitely going to jump outside and listen to the engines as they fire up on engine number two. So there's engine number one's available, starting engine two. Sounding really, really good. Jump back inside, 12%. Good start on engine number two. If you bleeds off, if you is off, and igniters to normal. So auto brakes on, spoilers armed, flaps one, anti ice not a concern, and flight controls full left, full right, neutral, full forward, full back, neutral. Aircraft, left rudder, exits, right rudder, neutral, flight controls are good, steering pin has been removed, the evacuation 
slides and the doors can be used as life rafts. Un sistema de iluminación de emergencia lo guiará hacia las salidas. An emergency lighting system will lead you to the exit. Yeah, it should be a good trip, Wayne. Esa es su salida más cercana a la que podría estar detrás. Let's go uh, 0 0.3 down. On the pitch trim, rudder trim indicating centered, and we are centered, so rudder trim is all good. Taxi lights on. Nick still at the gate. Brasilia 5556. Or Brasilia traffic, TAM 5556. Taxiing runway 11 right via apron 1, Romeo uniform. Yankee holding short one one right. Alright. Time to taxi. As you leave the aircraft, you play your best by pulling on the red handle or blowing into the tube. A light will turn on upon contact with the water. Si la cabina pierde presión, máscaras caerán automáticamente sobre su asiento. If the cabin loses pressure, masks will automatically drop down from above your seat. Tope la máscara, colóquela sobre su nariz y boca, deslice la banda elástica alrededor de su cabeza, ajustela y respire normalmente. Coloque su propia máscara. Since we make the turn here, we'll do our TO config, and when we get down on the uniform, we'll have the cabin crew. Place it over your nose and mouth. Secure the elastic band behind your head and breathe normally. Take their seats. That's us. On to Romeo. TO config is good. And again, once we get down onto uh, uniform, which is just ahead, we will uh, get the cabin crew set up. Another A320 sitting there. Oh, it's a 319. Which kind of means it could be anything. Very red soil out here. Kind of reminds me of Australia. Once you get away from the coasts, that's the entrance to apron three. And here is uniform. So the weather here is uh, pretty clear. We should be good. There are clouds at our destination as uh, according to the latest weather. All right, let's get the cab in there, ding. So it looks like some scattered clouds at 2,000 feet, and there's some uh, thunder, cloud, thunder uh, cells popping up in the area, and then there's a broken layer at 6,000 feet. So it could be cloudy as we come in. We will see. Yeah, we're gonna have a little bit of a celebration when we get there. It's the end of the end of the series uh, for South America, at least on this this series. Oh, forgot the clock. Get that running. New ones coming. Uh, while we're taxiing down here, let me remind everybody that friend of the channel and fellow flyer Willie Canuck is hosting a egg hunt starting mid-july it from what i can gather it is a ifr in general aviation airplanes egg hunt i've put a link to his website uh in the description and you can get more information uh on the hunt and when it starts and all that stuff below uh or at the uh from the link below so give it a check out 
Um, I know there's a lot of people that enjoy the GA flying and stuff, so it could be of interest to a lot of people. I'm going to, uh, when there's a little bit more detail, I'm going to check it out and see uh, if it's something that I can Australia squeeze into my schedule. We're almost down to the end. We don't got to worry too much about terrain, as you can see. It's uh, fairly, uh, fairly clear. It is a long haul down there, though. speed exit we are going right to the end a little bit of elevation here I mean the airport elevation is 3,498 feet so there's a little bit thinner here it's gonna have a little bit to the takeoff roll a little bit longer to get up to speed And we should have enough spacing that Nick should be able to just uh, wheel right on and take off when he gets here. Not have to wait for us. Alright, we're almost here. Let's start getting the brakes on. So if anyone wants to join me on these flights, you're more than welcome to. I uh, have the links to the, the flights up, usually at least a day before, uh, so the information will be there with the departure and arrival uh, point. Uh, and if we're flying the the Airbuses, it's just the same brief flight plan um, that I get just before the, the stream as I'm doing my prep. So it's, it's there, you're more than welcome to join and uh, fly alongside. They are on VATSIM, however, so you will have to be on VATSIM and uh, be up and doing all that stuff. Alright, so parking brake goes on. Cabin crew notified. Exterior lights all coming on. And nose wheel to take off. I, I think it is. Um, I mean, these are kind of like taken from satellite shots, so I'm assuming it is this red, which is kind of amazing. Uh, NTA is not required. Packs will remain on. TCAS, TARA, tilt above. Weather radar is. Uh, let's go. Radar 1 is on. PWS is on. Weather mode is WX plus T and takeoff memo no blue. All right, and approach path is clear both directions. <coughs> Brasilia area traffic, TAM triple five six taking position runway one one right. Parking brake off. Let's move out, and we'll get ourselves ready to go. bit more power to get her going. There's an aircraft inbound. Still at 23,000 feet or so, so we should be fine. Or we'll be fine.
lined up. So, here we go. Uh, just close this. Right, brakes are set. Engine's coming to 50%. Engine's 50%. And stable, brakes released. Throttles coming to climb power. And flex 60 degrees SRS and runway enabled. It's V1. Now and rotate. Pitching up, positive rate, you're up. Maddie, welcome to the stream. See you here. Dark witch ground textures. Oh, let's uh, head back into the cockpit. So we're gonna thrust levers back to climb. Get her on auto. And we'll head out on course. So there's S speed. Flaps coming up. Ground spoilers are disarmed. Yeah, it's a nice view. I like it. Looks great at night. Oh, Maddie, we've got a very special IFE. We got, we got one for today. I don't know. It, it might look like that in real life. I'm going to have to go on to Google Maps and do a little bit of a, a look at it. Anyway, we're above transition, so over to standard. So accelerating up to uh, 2250. Eight and a half thousand feet, and we are in the interior of Brazil, which is significantly higher than the coastal areas. Again, this is three and a half thousand feet here, so it is quite the uh, quite the increase from uh, from the coast in a short, uh, relatively short uh, period of time. So there's 10,000 feet. Landing lights can come off. All the extra lights will come off as well. There's the seatbelt signs off, portable devices signs off. And we are turning on course. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now passing through 10,000 feet. You can now turn on your larger portable electronic devices. As a reminder, please it's nice to see the uh, descent markers, but having two of them relatively close, I think one should be a top of climb, not top of descent, but you know, whatever. They're working on it. The flight crew has turned off the fastest seatbelt sign. You can have it up and move around the cabin. However, we ask that you keep your seatbelt fastened when you can see some unexpected turbulence. There's the coast. See, the soil still's got that red tinge to it. So we're climbing out and we're on our way. All 
right, everything is looking good. And Nick is up as well. through 17,000 feet. I do have to see if the new improved DC-6 uh, that they just released fixes the textures when you're outside trying to set up external cameras. That was a little frustrating. Unfortunately, there's a model issue. Because that would be a nice plane to get some good uh, shots of the wings with the props and everything. And that other aircraft is heading in. Everything's good. Uh, they don't do that until we're in cruise, so... Gonna have to wait a few minutes. You'll hear them come around. They'll let you know when they're about to start their service. All right, there's 20,000 feet. Should be nice coming in over the coast today. Some nice views of the water. And we should see one of the main rivers in uh, in Brazil as well. We're going to be passing over the Rio São Francisco uh, about halfway or just before halfway. It's interesting you can see how the where the the Portuguese is coming in there's a town south of our route instead of Monte Carlo which would be the Italian. I think that would be the Italian. It's Montes Carlos. Looking good, some good views at the windows as we climb up. Again, no clouds right now, so we're supposed to run into it when we get closer to Salvador. We'll see. Some uh, farmer's fields down there. See from the circular patterns of the irrigation uh, system. So that was us making our turn uh, and we're off the star now and heading on to our en route heading. All right, so we can turn off the VOR now before we uh, start to relax into the flight. It's time to get our performance stuff in for our descent. So. We're going to be coming down from 39,000 feet, and we're going to want to be at Adabva. It is between four and 5,000, so we'll call it uh, 4,500. Actually, it's going to be 9,000. That's a hard restriction we have to be under. So we'll go for 9,000, and that's at Algim. So I'll leave you running on there. We're going to come down. So we look at the flight plan. There it is there, Algim. we got to be at 9,000 feet. So we're going to uh, push that into our uh, progress page. And A L G I M. We'll go in there. We're 500 miles away, but we have to be under 9,000, so that will be good there. We're making our turn here to Seldi. 
have 12,000 feet to go on our climb. Alright, so we'll uh, set you guys up. We'll start the IFE. Cabin crew will be around shortly with drinks and snacks, and we will check in with you when we get ready to begin our descent. Enjoy, and I will be in the chat.
Now stay in the closet because you know you live. Our lovely flight attendants will be starting our in-flight service. We'll be serving complimentary drinks and snacks. Premium drinks are available for a small charge. Please note we only accept credit cards. That override off. Engine arm off. 13 is in. We copy you down, Eagle. Listen, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twain. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. And we're getting a picture on the TV. Uh, there's a great deal of contrast in it, and uh, currently it's upside down on our monitor, but we can make out a fair amount of detail. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. Sunday, July 20th, 1969. Around the world, Nearly a billion people watched this moment on television as the first man from Earth prepared to set foot upon the moon. At the foot of the ladder, the lamb footbeds are only uh, uh, depressed in the surface about uh, one or two inches, now, although the surface appears to be uh, very, very fine-grained as you get close to it. It's almost like a powder. 
ground mass uh, is very fine. Now I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man. One giant leap for mankind. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. All that we have accomplished in space, all that we may accomplish in days and years to come, we stand ready to share for the benefit of all mankind. As we explore the reaches of space, let us go to the new worlds together. Not as new worlds to be conquered, but as a new adventure to be shared. Since the earliest time man has imagined this moment, the moment when his fellow man would make the first journey to the moon, now the time had come. In the sixth decade of the 20th century, the ancient dream was to become a reality. The flight of Apollo 11 was the culmination of many years of planning, working, building, and testing. Thousands of people had contributed toward this day of accomplishment. The great Saturn V rocket and the complex Apollo spacecraft had been assembled together and moved to the launch pad. The equipment and techniques and personnel had been proved in earlier missions, and now they were ready. The astronauts chosen for this mission had flown it many times in ground-based simulators. They had all been in space before. They had trained carefully and well. And now, they too were ready. Astronaut Michael Collins would pilot the Apollo Command Module. Astronaut Edwin Aldrin, Jr. would pilot the Lunar Module. and astronaut Neil Armstrong would serve as mission commander. Armstrong would be the first man to step upon the moon. July 16th, the day had come. The moon awaited. The men rose early, ate breakfast, and dressed in their spacesuits. Other astronauts had made this journey to the launch pad, but never with such anticipation. 9.32 a.m., July 16th. Three hours later, the Apollo Command Module moves forward to extract the lunar module from the third stage of the launch vehicle. Both are moving at more than 17,000 miles an hour. Docked together, they will sail a quarter million miles across the sea of space and into orbit around the Earth's nearest neighbor. Oh, well, it's clear now, Mike, and we understand that you are docked. During the three-day journey to the moon, the astronauts kept busy. Checklists, 
navigation and observation, housekeeping. They must work in a weightless environment, keeping their spacecraft and themselves in good condition. Data must be collected and reported. Experiments must be performed, including photography both inside and outside the spacecraft. Because of the film speed, these actions appear faster than they actually were. Apollo 11 slows down and goes into orbit around the moon. The bright blue planet of Earth now lies 238,000 miles beyond the lunar horizon. Astronauts Armstrong and Aldrin, now in the lunar module, separate from the command module. Astronaut Collins remains behind. Preparation for the lunar module descent to the moon now begins. The module assumes the new name, Columbia. The lunar module will be called the Eagle. From Columbia, Michael Collins' camera sees bright rays of the sun reflecting patterns of color from the surface of the Eagle. In this strange metallic bird, rides the ancient and endless dream of all mankind. The command pilot can see detail which his camera cannot record. The four landing pads of the lunar module are fully extended and locked in place. The Eagle is poised and prepared for its descent to the lunar surface. craft rocket engine fires to slow it down and to place it on the pathway to the landing site in the sea of tranquility. There is tension and caution as the Eagle flies lower. Warning lights blink on as the computer tries to keep up with the demand for control data, but the status remains go. Eagle, we got you now. It's looking good. Over. Roger, copy. Eagle Houston, after yaw around, angle, uh, S-band pitch, minus niner, yaw, plus one eight. Roger, you're a go to, con you go to continue power descent. You're a go to continue power descent. Altitude now 21,000 feet, still looking very good. Velocity down now to 1,200 feet per second. You're looking great to us, Eagle. Give us a reading on the 1202 program alarm. Roger, we got you. We're going at alarm. Good radar data. We're now in the approach phase. Everything looking good. Altitude 4200. Houston, you're a go for landing. Over. I do understand. Go for landing. 3,000 feet. Top alarm. Altitude 1,600. 1,400 feet. Still looking very good. 700 feet, 21 down. 33 degrees. 100 feet down at 19. 1201. 1201. Roger, 1201 alarm. We're go, same tight, we're go. Altitude, velocity, light, and half down. 220 feet. 15 forward. 11 forward, coming down nicely, 200 feet. Four and a half down. Five and a half down. 60 seconds. Lights on. Down two and a half. Forward. Forward. Head. 
40 feet down, two and a half, picking up some dust. Four forward, four forward, drift into the right a little. Good. Okay. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. We copy you down, Eagle. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Through the window of the Eagle, Armstrong and Aldrin see what no human eyes have ever seen before. Their spacecraft casts a long shadow across the undisturbed dust of centuries. Seven hours after landing, after careful preparations for later ascent were completed, Armstrong opens the Eagle hatch and begins his climb down to the surface. footsteps on this strange new world must be taken cautiously. The moon has only one-sixth the gravity of Earth. The nature of its surface was still unknown. I'm going to step off the limb now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Once on the surface, Armstrong scoops up a small sample of lunar dust and rock, precaution against the possibility of an emergency takeoff. According to plan, astronaut Aldrin now descends from the Eagle. He and his equipment would weigh 383 pounds on Earth. Here, they weigh about 66 pounds. men on the moon stand and look at the stark, lonely landscape around them, an experience which no one before them can share. But there is much to be done in the limited time which they can stay on this airless, cloudless satellite of Earth. This sheet of metal foil traps and holds particles from the sun, the so-called solar wind, or barrage of solar energy, which constantly strikes the moon's surface. Results of this experiment will be taken back to Earth to reveal new secrets to anxious scientists. An American flag is left behind on the moon, together with medals honoring American and Soviet spacemen who lost their lives in earlier space tests, and a small disk carrying messages of goodwill from 73 nations on Earth. A plaque on the lunar module reads, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon, July 1969 A.D. We came in peace for all mankind. Through a specially made television camera, viewers in many nations on Earth were able to watch the astronauts as they walked and worked on the moon. Despite the bulky spacesuits and the backpacks containing oxygen, temperature control, and communications equipment, 
the Apollo 11 crew found they could move easily about the surface. Because there is no wind or rain on the moon, these footprints will remain for centuries. In addition to collecting rock and soil samples, the explorers leave behind a seismometer. This highly sensitive device would send back valuable information on external meteoroid impacts, as well as internal lunar movements. prism laser reflector would help man to measure the exact distance from Earth to Moon to an accuracy of six inches. These were the first of many experiments which will be taken to the Moon to provide man continuing and increasing knowledge about the Moon and the vastness of space beyond. After two hours and 31 minutes, the first lunar explorers had completed their research on the Moon. A night of rest in the lunar module, countdown preparations, and they were ready to come home. Tranquility Base, uh, Houston. Guidance recommendation uh, is pings, and you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. Seven, six, five, work stage, engine arm assets. Shadow, beautiful. Very smooth. Very quiet ride. There's that one crater on there. Thousand feet high, 80 feet uh, per second vertical rise. Eagle Houston, uh, you're looking good at two. Ping, zags, and mist in, all agree. I'm going right down US 1. Eagle Houston, going right down the track. Everything's great. Horizontal velocity approaching 2,500 feet per second. Roger. Some 120 miles to go until insertion. July 21st. The Eagle and its two-man crew lifted off the moon perfectly and climbed slowly to rendezvous and dock with the mother ship, Columbia. Armstrong and Aldrin explored the moon, astronaut Collins had kept a long and lonely vigil in the Columbia. The approaching eagle was a welcome sight. Later, the three men would share their reflections on this adventure with the world. I believe that uh, from the early space flights, we demonstrated a potential to carry out this type of a mission. And again, it was a question of time until this would be accomplished. I think it's a technical triumph for this country to have uh, said what it was going to do a number of years ago, and then by golly do it. The relative ease with which we were able to carry out our mission, which of course came after a very efficient and logical sequence of flights, I think that this demonstrated that uh, we were certainly on the right track when we took this commitment to, to go to the moon. I just see it uh, as a beginning, a beginning of a new age.
Once again, the bright blue planet of Earth rises over the lunar horizon. For those who had witnessed man's landing in the Sea of Tranquility, the moon would never again appear quite the same. July 24th, dawn in the Pacific. Apollo blazes across the heavens, coming back to Earth at 25,000 miles an hour. President Richard Nixon, who had talked with the astronauts by telephone while they were on the moon, was waiting aboard the recovery carrier to welcome the returning voyagers. The president later expressed the nation's response to this historic mission. Some way, when those two Americans stepped on the moon, the people of this world were brought closer together. That it is that spirit, the spirit of Apollo, that America can now help to bring to our relations with other nations. The spirit of Apollo transcends geographical barriers and political differences it can bring the people of the world together in peace. To protect against any possible lunar contamination, the astronauts put on airtight special garments before coming aboard the rescue ship. They transferred directly from the helicopter to a mobile quarantine van in which they would be flown back to the manned spacecraft center in Houston, Texas. July 27th, the journey was ended. They were home again. three weeks of isolation, medical tests, and mission debriefings, then visits to major cities of America and abroad. The details of their unique mission would be relived and remembered so that others might learn what they had learned, and that future travelers in space might build upon their experience. The rock and soil samples brought back would be examined and analyzed by scientists in many lands. They would reveal new insights into the origin and the age and the composition of the moon, and perhaps new knowledge of the Earth as well. Already experiments left on the moon were sending back revealing new information. mission was successfully completed. The Eagle had landed the first men on the moon and Columbia had returned them safely to Earth. Wherever man journeys tomorrow across the ocean of our universe, history will remind him that Apollo 11 
was mankind's first encounter with a new world.
all welcome back to the flight deck you can see we're coming up to the coast I'm gonna kill the map now we're basically on a straight in routing at the moment uh, there's the clouds that we were talking about see them starting to form out here as we get closer to the water well, let's head down we'll get the uh, local weather and then we'll uh, start getting our descent stuff ready so just do a confirmation that the sim weather is the same as the uh, weather that I'm getting off the, the matter the live matters it's nice to see they put the alternates in here as well so I'm just waiting to get the message that they're in there it is company message message received and we'll print tank buster uh, what did you write? Oh, you wrote the A20. Uh, the A20... Okay, let me think. Was the A20 the Havoc from World War II? It sounded familiar, I just didn't pick up on the... on that. But it is the A10, is the, war, the Warthog. Alright, so... Uh, Q&H is 1019. We have a current temperature at the airfield of 25 degrees. And the winds are showing 150 at 10. And it's sunlight bouncing on this thing. In real life, you could pick it up. Uh, transition altitude for the airport, 7,000 feet. We're doing the ILS, so it's going to be a barrel of 231. <clears throat> so all our information is now entered in. We're about 40 miles away from where we're going to consider our top of descent. So uh, local showers, scattered clouds at 2,000, and again, few at uh, 23 with the embedded thunderstorms and a broken layer at 6,000 feet. And you can see the layer. We're uh, coming up to it fairly quickly. Not seeing any thunder embedded. Well, a few rises there. They're not very high. So we'll see. Yeah, the A-10's a great aircraft. I got to watch them training uh, when I was in the States one year. <coughs> Working with the Americans. And quite the distinctive sound, especially when that gun goes off. So we're going to uh, start our descent probably at about 105 miles because we're going to be going a little bit faster uh, they're showing us at 260 we're going to peg it at 270 so we'll take the extra few so we got about 20 miles to go before we start it down uh, should be looking good not really any precipitation coming up on the weather radar to the descent point as we uh, make our final landing in the tour Douglas A20 Havoc yeah okay I knew the A20 sounded familiar so 111.9 one, one, one sure that is entered in 111.9 one, one, one ISA ISA is the correct identifier we're also going to tune in the beacon it's the SVD uh, which I believe is also a, is, that, is that an S is also a Russian sniper rifle if I've got that wrong so there's SVD and that's the one we want 116.5 so we'll tune that in I'll turn that on it's still gonna be a little bit out of range at the moment but that's good yeah I know it's uh, it's horrible well, I hope you guys enjoyed the flight so far the in-flight entertainment something a little different it's a shorter clip for the shorter flights. I'm looking for smaller things that uh, are interesting and 
would provide uh, the entertainment when I can't run a full hour and a half movie. Well, I could, but then I just have to cut it off, and who wants that, right? So, TCAS, we're going to set to below. Still don't think that does anything yet, but we'll do it anyway. Doing good. We're down to 114 miles out. Yeah, we'll give us that 10 uh, nautical mile not nautical mile buffer. It's coming up for noon local time. Might even be one o'clock local. I'm not sure if they're pushed an hour eastward. I uh, see, see some weather coming up, so it looks like we could hit some of that precipitation. So again, we're going down to 9,000 feet, which is our, we have to be under by the time we have flight level 90. So we'll dial that in. And okay. Now we're just uh, waiting for uh, couple miles to click through and that's good enough so we're now going to uh, start down we're going to tag it at uh, 2,000 feet per minute and we're going to keep the speed 260 at the moment. We're going to go up to 270 in a minute once we get uh, down to a little bit thicker air. Salvador area traffic, TAM 5556, leaving flight level 390 inbound for the Taleb 1 Alpha arrival into Salvador. So, everything is looking good. And now on our way down. Nick's still behind us. So we're basically going to uh, come down here, we're going to cross out over the bay and uh, it's a slight uh, left-right jog to get onto the ILS and then we'll be uh, down in Salvador. Generic uh, stock airports, I couldn't find anything on flightsim.to that uh, was good for either the departure or the arrival airport. one last reminder uh, Willie Canucks egg hunt if you're interested in a IFR um, GA aircraft type of uh, egg hunt adventure he's hosting it there's a link to his page down in the, in the video description you can uh, give a click on that and find out some more also if you haven't already uh, and you're watching and you enjoy what you see like subscribe comments are always useful welcome and I do reply and suggestions for stuff um, I have had a few and not just for flights like this but my helicopter sightseeing flights 
We've had a couple suggestions. So we look at everything. Let's jump back inside. Get out, go up and get that up to 270. And we'll ride 270 all the way down. see the Taleb that's our entry point and there's the Almond we got to be down to 9,000 feet by there so that's what we're now monitoring and everything is looking good I think that was Nick uh, announcing he's turning his descent. Shoot Nightbot at dawn. Well, Nightbot has his uses. You just have to be on your best behavior when he's around. There's 31,000 feet coming up. Starting to see a little bit of the weather approaching. This is the point where if we could vary the angle on the weather radar, we tilt it downwards so we kind of had a better idea of what we were flying into as we descended rather than getting it just straight outside the airplane. And the thing they haven't fixed, which is a little annoying, is the weather radar isn't 360. It, uh, we'd be shooting right back into the airplane. And we don't want that. So it's actually like a 120, 140 degree arc out in front of the airplane. Be nice to see that modeled a little bit more accurately. So, what do we have going on at our destination airport? Let's uh, type it in and see what kind of uh, traffic we have. So, there's three aircraft currently on the ground. There's a 737, a PC-12, and an Embraer 170. Good place for the Embraer. It's where they're made. We currently have four aircraft inbound. There's the two of us, then there's a A320 CEO and a 787-900 coming in from Portugal, it looks like. Yeah, the military, law enforcement, all fire ambulance, they're all bad for uh, Putting a certain dark edge on humor. Alright, so there's four of us inbound and there is three at the field. At the moment there is a 737 getting ready to go by the looks of it. Uh, some of the other aircraft are fairly far away, so not really all that worried about them. We're down to 26,000. Looking good. See the VOR is now pointing towards the airport, and it says it's what 80 is that 87, 82 miles out.
So this is going to turn into pretty much a straight in. Uh, let's see what the outside air temperature is doing. It's plus five already, so anti-ice is not going to be an issue. By the time we get down to the clouds, it'll be plus ten or more. So there's 23,000, so we get the portable devices being put away. And once we get down to about 18,000, we'll get the seatbelt signs on. We are going to have to slow down as well. We're going to get her down to 250 by 10,000. You can see some of the little pop-ups there on the cloud deck. That's where your high energy convection is going on, and that's where you can likely get thunderstorms. So given the time of day, these are probably going to build over the next hour or two, and probably have storms in the late afternoon. So we're inbound to the beginning of the star. I think it's about six and a half thousand feet or so, six thousand feet above us, coming in behind. Now when we get to the airport, let's do a quick check. going to be a right hand exit probably down towards Foxtrot either Foxtrot or Alpha the whole length but I think we should be able to do Foxtrot the airport elevation is only 66 feet so that shouldn't play a factor here's 19,000 coming up for the clouds so it could get a little turbulent in there. Ladies and gentlemen, the seatbelt sign is now turned on, so it's time to return to your seat and fasten your seatbelt. Well, it's been fun flying in the Star Wars livery. Something a little different. The series that is replacing this is another multi-leg series. It's uh, I think it's 13, 13 legs, and is uh, rather interesting. So ooh, what's going on here? Let's go back inside. Oh, you're just lining up, okay? Uh, so it's it's going to be an interesting one. So more information on that to follow. There's the moon. that will be starting uh, next Sunday. Right. Almost no wind, which is nice. So 12,000 will dial back on the speed, and at 11,000 we'll use a little bit of speed brake to bring it down. <clears throat> it's only uh, 20 knots. So real speed restrictions until we hit uh, Dava, and then we're going to be cycling into where we want to be. And it's a 2,500 foot platform for the intercept. Very quiet for Nick there. Not sure if that's because of the distance or not. Uh, if I look at my audio settings, uh, maybe I've got it turned a bit low. Yeah, I think I turned it down when I had a really loud uh, 
controller on the other day. There's 14,000. Coming in for the weather. It's 13,000. We'll dial her down to 260. See how she does it, slowing her down. Yeah, I think it's a combination, Nick, of distance, and I had the, uh, my volume turned down for that. Just because the guy was blowing out my eardrums the other day. Alright, so 250 was dialed in. We're going to leave the standard altitude because that changes at 7,000. We're only going down to 9. Gonna go down to four thousand by Dabva. Right. Start throwing a little bit of speed breakout. Slippery airplane. Headwind coming in now as we get closer to the clouds. So full speed break now. It's ten thousand feet. Arm the landing systems, both sides. Get the lights on. Gonna final yeah. your I'm gonna turn the uh, runway turn offs because I don't know what it's going to be like. Barrel will change in a second. I'm going to 1019. All right, so we're down. So we're going to go down to 4,000 now. That's going to be our new limit. We'll hit uh, 18,000 on that. I'm going to go to half on the speed brakes just to help control the speed. Here comes the clouds. Uh, the 15. Let's see if we can come off fully on the speed brakes. Just let the engines idle. Still got 20 miles before we got to be down to 4,000 feet. Not plenty of room. In fact, we'll probably take this down to about 1,000 feet. We're going to go over to our pressure here. We're going to 100 or 1019. Do that for both. And we've got all our information entered in. And it's already put us into approach mode. And there's the rain. You can see the little jog we're doing here to get ourselves lined up. Six thousand. Increase our descent rate a little bit, and we're going to come down to two four zero on the speed.
So I'm going to go into train mode on my side. I can see the weather radar over on the FO side. Roger will let me know if there's anything major coming up. It looks like we're going to blow through the heavier precipitation, and then when we come out the other side, it should be pretty decent. It's 5,000 feet. Speed's back to 240. is tuned. Nine miles to go before we make that turn. So we're going to uh, level off at 4,000 feet and then uh, about three miles out we'll uh, go into approach phase in manage mode and that will bring us in at 210. So we only got a 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Uh, we got about 10 miles from Log Gav, which is that point up here. We're now picking up the ILS 111.9 and ESA and 18 and a half miles out. So we're good there. We're right on course. We have to watch, see what this does as we approach. the uh, heavy rain we're going through. It should clear as we push out to the other side. There's those uh, re starting to reach up on those uh, cumulus towers, the buildups. So Dibro is the actual intercept point. So there's 2.5, we're going to start slowing her down, and we're going to want to dial in 2,500 feet. We should be good, so we're starting to turn, so we'll start down 2,500 feet. The land coming in, there's the island. I'm going to take over and we're going to go to 70 for the intercept. Coming down below the glide slope now, which is what we want. And we're 11 miles out, we'll flaps one. Ten miles. Approach mode is armed. Nine and a half miles, flaps two. We're capturing the glide slope before we capture the localizer, which is interesting. Uh, I don't know why we didn't capture the glide slope. Oh, there we go. Right, speed is coming back into the clouds. We'll do the cabin. Spoilers are armed. 
Seven miles. Leave the cabin again. Cabin cruising. Outer marker. Fifteen hundred feet. Gear down. Five miles to the runway. In and out of the clouds here, which was expected. Gear down, three green, flaps two, or flaps three. And we are five and a half miles out. Yeah, Wayne, I'm looking forward to see the performance updates on that. Should be really, really good. And flaps full. So, localizers captured. Glide slopes captured. Autopilot 2 coming on. Airport is not in sight. I think it's behind that cloud there. Alright, starting to see some light. I've seen the airport light. Ah, there we go. The runway's in sight. Landing. One hundred. Fifty. Forty. Thirty. Twenty. Ten. Five. And we're down. Reverse is on. Hundred knots. Eighty knots. 60 knots, reverser's off. Right, we're actually going to make it here at Echo. So we'll do a hard turn. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached our destination. The local time is 1.01 p.m. and it's currently about 26 degrees Celsius. You can now use your mobile devices. Please remain seated until the aircraft has come to a complete stop and the seatbelt sign is turned off. Oh, welcome to Salvador. items may have shifted during the flight. If this is your final destination, we thank you for flying with us, and we hope to see you again soon. There's a couple of other airplanes that are on the uh, on the ramp. Coordenação em Salvador, o ATA Brasil 7297, no pátio 3, pátio carga. Off, 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 off. The main terminal, in the far Thank you, Wayne. Salvador traffic, TAM 5556, taxiing from runway 10 via Alpha to Apron 1 at the terminal. I think I see Nick off in the distance there, his light. Southbound traffic, TAM 1880, established runway 10. There he is. So we're 20 minutes ahead of schedule, which is nice. But, uh, it was a nice flight. See Nick there. So we're just going to uh, 
park at one of the gates here as we come in. In fact, we're going to go to the one where everyone's gathered around waiting for us. See how well we do. I'm trying to see which one they mean for us to go to. It looks like this one. Alright, so let's uh, kill that light and that light so we're not blinding anybody. And the sun's on that side, so I'm going to want to be on over here so I can see where we're going with the nose wheel. Yeah, I got off. I keep getting off center on these landings, which is a little bit annoying. Oh, all right, don't want to get going too fast. There's one of those aircraft leaving now. See him on the taxiway, he's pushed back. I think that was the guy that was talking when we first pulled in. So we're gonna keep going. I'm not moving over, I'm on the line. You're the one that's out of place there, ramp guy. And we'll stop right there. So, we are parked. Parking brake is on. Navades are off. FCU is fine. Flight directors and landing systems coming off. Autopilot, auto thruster off. NDs are set back to 10, arc and clear. Anti-ice is not required. It's already off. Ground power is on. Engine masters one and two are off. Uh, there goes the Alpha Tango. Uh, Alpha Tango is shutting down. She's shutting down. Fuel pumps are now off. Beacons off. Portable devices are off. Seat belts are off. External power is confirmed. Transponder is off. Roger, go say goodbye to the nice people, would you? Oh, let's get the uh, jetway. Thank you. And we'll jump outside. It looks like it's raining again. A little bit. And there we are. Let's see if these guys here can get the uh, jetway to connect properly. There we go. That's the way. You go go back to Brasilia. Show your guys over there how it's done. So where is Nick? Should be down. Oh, there he is. He's getting off the uh, getting off the runway, and he's going to be taxiing up. So there we go. Thank you very much for joining me on today's flight. It is the last of a series. It's been a lot of fun flying in South America, and hope you all enjoyed it. Looking forward to the next series. It's going to be uh, quite the adventure as well. And again, if you want to join us on the flights anytime, you just got to be on VATSIM and you will be good to go. Thanks everybody for watching. 
for the likes, for the subs, and all that good stuff. And we will see you on the next one. Take care. Bye for now.